a green and white invasion of the Cordobista persuasion in town for another Andalus derby occasion. One nil to Cordoba as they bit like a cobra. Was our unbeaten run going to be over? No chance. Losing's not our jam. Corda say, God damn, popping up for them like unwanted spam. Was our boy hype tam, crashing in like bam bam, dealing hits out like best selling peak wham. So Cordoba, we're sorry to cheat you, but never mind. Now we're going to Ibiza. Oh, back to the island. The boys, like the boys of Venga, to dash Ibiza's hopes and see them fall like Jenga. We're chasing second spot, and it is Ibiza we need to pass. Can we do it? Well, let's talk about that on the Geary cast. Welcome to the Geary cast on Sport Direct Radio with um, me, Matt Harrison. I've got my order mixed up here, haven't I? Um, and as always, my Geary cast team. Uh, I will start with you, Nick Bell. How are you? Good evening. I'm very good. Thank you, Matt. Again, fantastic rap. We are, we're, we're, we're being treated this season. This is a new dimension and I enjoy it every single week. Good. Glad, glad to hear. Um, I, I'm, I'm enjoying your pink uh, Alfonso Herrero s goalie top and I can fear to say more on him later, I think. Luke Chambers, how are you? Good evening, Matt. I'm very well, thank you. And like Nick's just said, these raps are getting better and better every week, I've got to say. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you don't need to say this every single time, guys. So. <laughs> um, and I I'll try and say hello to Chris Marquez, but he might be distracted. He's already told us that um, he's just going to be watching football during this. So, hello, Chris. And um, what are you watching? I don't have time for this. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I think we need a beat. Yeah, I thought that. But also... Um, it's quite but I think we, we we have to put the beat uh, under it every week after the show. Yeah, I think so because it's it's I'm looking at Nick Bell now. It's quite hard for me to sort of um <laughs> believe it or not. I'm I'm not I've not really done this stuff before. I'm I'm not a qualified um rapper, so I do slip up and I think a beat might throw me, but um we, we can discuss it. We, we can have a practice run, maybe. <laughs> we can posthumously find a beat when we do the recording and then we can find like a rhythm that goes with it. Or maybe for like... Uh, or, we, is or, we the, um, or, or we mix it together after the podcast. Okay. Oh, God. Is, yeah. this, is this leading to an hour? Maybe that's better. Is this part of the Abifa special? Now we're coming up with uh, backing tracks and anthems. Maybe oh, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see what uh, Matt's kind of like. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, the, the the music that he follows in his head, like what what's yeah. the song that's in there to see if well, we can guess it eventually. To be honest with you, it's it's more. Um, it uh, I do like I do have a little practice before. I usually have one or two goes to make sure it works. It's usually a bit faster actually. I had sort of as get a bit nervous when we press the record. <laughs> um, it feels a bit cool in the going to me. Um, yeah, you know, well, yeah, that's uh, why it's, uh, it's so, bit, yeah. bit, that one. <laughs> do do you yeah. ever do you ever stand in front of the mirror, Matt, midweek with your hoodie up and just spit bars to yourself and see see how it all feels? Pretty much what I do as soon as the full time result is in on, um, <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, but maybe maybe we should have. Now I feel really stupid. Now we should have perhaps even just taken an old rap. I did and turned it into a dance anthem for this week. Um, just mixed it, just like sampled me saying, I don't know, you're listening to the Geary cast. You're listening to the Geary cast. I don't know. There um, is time. We are <laughs> there, is <laughs> there is time. Maybe, maybe well, that could be the uh, the celebratory song next week if um, all goes well out in Ibiza. Um, I, I think we're just stalling for time a bit here because amazingly, we don't really have any news which um I, I literally do mean amazingly because i'm always like oh do we have to talk about that do we have to talk about that um i think most of the stuff we've got littered through throughout the podcast but um i don't know who wants to tell me about it but you you told me something about the copa del rey draw before we pressed play that i think it was meant to be this week and now it's next week that's an exciting story isn't it yes luke it's an exciting story and Luke was on it, to be fair. He had his fingers oh. to the pulse of this. Uh, I, I was led to believe. It. As far as I'm aware, the cup draw were today at one o'clock. So posting the draw will be live in 15 minutes. Very quickly, I got shut down. That It's actually not. It's on the 15th of November. 
looking into it, apparently there's something going off with Granada and maybe one or two other teams, which the Spanish authorities decided to postpone the draw till the 15th. Whether there could be another way, I don't know. Our in-house well, journalist wouldn't allow this to happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he's um, he's he's surprisingly he's been at Real Madrid a week. He's not here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Madrista King 2.0. He's forgotten yeah. about us already. He, he's turned out with Don Carlo and Jude Bellingham. He's currently sat in a sauna with Vinicius and uh, yeah. <laughs> and Modric. Met Met Butragueño this weekend. Yeah, this weekend. I love that as well. But he's like, does anyone hear the Butragueño? Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> Did you see what Butragueño looks like nowadays? Yeah, yeah, he's um, he's in good nick, isn't he? I saw your comment, Chris. <laughs> I, I just like to think Alex has had his week there, and he's gone. Ah, this is what journalism is. <laughs> um, yeah, to be honest, comment. I don't think it's it's far away from what we do. We uh, the only difference is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Chris. <laughs> the only difference is that we don't have a website and we don't have the time to write like articles. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and we, 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 we do it in tweets. And we have to yeah. pull information out of the club. Whereas yes. Alex is literally inside the building, sat at, and, I assume, the very back of the room because he can't see anybody. Alex, Alex has jumped ship and we start seeing, like, I don't know, um, every week uh, Real Madrid TV start with a rap and then they start <laughs> they, they start stealing Gary cast ideas, which Alex... Well, but to be honest, I don't think we are far away from journalism. We are quite there. We are on top of it. I just but can't wait for... Alex we Ray also have we, we all have like normal jobs as well. Like if we had if we would be on this full time, we so Chris, would you're be basically anything. saying that we we're adults and Alex isn't quite yet. Like real journalists do this for work. I mean, I would love to do this for work. I, I would do a daily show on Malaga. And besides, write yeah, articles. Chris Marquette, I, guess. I just well, want to know Paolo Ancelotti's yeah. heard of Yeovil. That's all I want to know. That 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 is until Alex <laughs> gets that question answered, he can send me all the videos of football training and interviews and famous ex Real Madrid legends. I want to know if Don Carlo knows who Yeovil Town are. Imagine all Sky Sports yeah. News one week. They're showing you his interview. <laughs> Something about Yeovil. <laughs> I think that should be something in um, in the Gary Cast community Telegram group. We ask um, our our followers to uh, pitch yeah. questions. They want Alex Ashmore to ask um, anyone at Real Madrid. About it. <laughs> be interesting to see what they come up with. I'm sure they'd be. Um, I mean, if we, could get like a, if we could like get like a huge sponsor who would pay our month salary for all of us. We could do this every day from from Monday till Friday, and then we, uh, really, we, we already can't afford Luke James' his wages. What are you on about? <laughs> and then we write articles. We start a website. The thing what Alex can't do at Real Madrid though, he cannot arrange a good piss up with a lot of Malagistas. That is a good good link there, Lee Chambers, because we I did say before we pressed record, uh, there's no news. Um, so let's be a bit self-indulgent. I think we've probably done that already. But um, Chris, you, you've sort of been, um, I, I guess we've all played a part in organising it. But I don't know. I think you made the poster yesterday. So tell us what's happening. Not yeah, the Saturday after on um, too much day's time. The Gear Cup meetup. That's it, Chris. That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I just see Napoli score. Oh, right. oh sorry, Lazio. Okay. D shall I take over when they say what it is then? Um, no, we are uh, hosting the third. Is it the third? Yes, the third Geary yeah. Cup meetup. The first was in Manchester. Oh, yeah, okay. The second was in Malaga last season. And this is the third. And we have a lot of people coming. Hmm. For being uh, a small podcast, 
Yeah, and, and also again, I know I know Chris has said we're we're almost at the level of Real Madrid. Um, but um a, a meetup for us involves meeting in um Antigua, what's it called? Casa de Antigua. Uh, I can't say it. Casa de Antigua. Um Antigua in, Casa de Guardia. See, I knew I got it. I knew I had it right the first time. I always get the words mixed up with that place, um, which is the famous Vumu place um on the main street in Malaga, and then we take it from there. Um yeah. I've got my lucky route at the moment, so I'm probably going to just, even on Saturday when or Sunday when I met some of our listeners, um, our regular listeners, um, I said, we have to go. Well, I said, I have to go to these places. If you're coming with me, that's up to you. <laughs> I think, I, I, I I think we will follow all, all 21 or 19, I don't remember, uh, who are coming. We'll follow your movement. We follow you. Okay. That's, I've that, got that's... no shame in it, and I had to mute the Telegram group on Sunday, uh, pure, purely out of envy more than anything. Okay. Every time yeah. a picture came through yeah. of you in a different bar, drinking a lovely Cerveza, wearing your new shiny Malaga kits, I just thought, fuck off. Yeah. What time are you arriving to Malaga Airport, Nick? Uh, I get into Malaga at 10 o'clock. Yes. And then I'll fill that Telegram group with pictures of me and Cerveza. It's going to be great. <laughs> Luke, when are you arriving? Uh, I land about half past ten, about half an hour after uh, after Nick, and then we will be out there on the town. Shall yes. we do a little contest? We will get there early. Race the world? What in terms <laughs> to Malaga or to the? Uh... No, because Malaga, you already lost. But to <laughs> the Giricas meetup. Yeah, Nick's going for a uh, a lovely, oh, yeah, he's going to take a lovely little first. tapas meal, I think. Me and Laura's the yeah. kind of quick McDonald's and away we go kind of people. But we are going to eat as well because uh, yeah. I know. Right? Chris, I know if there's, Chris, if there's any three people, three people, people there, there, man. there's going to be a lot. Yeah, of but it's in croquetas. <laughs> I, I I already suggested we go to the same place now, which has since become the Touchy Lady place, as everyone seems to call it. Who I don't think is there anymore. So I hope we didn't lose get her sacked um because there's lots of space in there um and it's always not as busy as other place but i'm open to whatever um yes i uh, yes looking forward to it um six o'clock kickoff against alcoyano so it's a bit of time after to let's not say the p word yet but i think even if we lose the p word might be uh coming out um we shall see um I, I've also written down in notes here uh, the Geary Cast Awards, only because, sorry, Geary Cast Awards, the Football Content Awards. I was jumping the gun a bit there, wasn't I? Um, yeah, no. You've gone to my head with all this Real Madrid stuff. Um, that's next week, but I think we might be recording before then. Am I right? I think it's Thursday next week, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So me, me, me and Lukey, we're going to go off for a night on the tiles. Um, we're getting dressed up. We, are we, we, were, we were texting each other this afternoon saying, what are you wearing? Oh, I'm going to wear this. What are you wearing? And I think we've settled on either two things. Uh, it's a cocktail attire. So Malaga shirt, suit jacket, chinos. <laughs> or going full hog and getting ourselves some matador outfits. Nice. To, uh, to, to, to really just throw home that we are representing uh, Espana. <laughs> we, we, want, we want everybody to know who we are. Yeah, and I guess in the UK that is the ultimate sign of, of representing the Spaniard. They go, ah, oh, they are Spanish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's a bit problematic, but maybe not um, less on there. Um, no, that's we're funny. looking forward I, to it, aren't we? We're, yeah, we're, it should be a good night. Either we, way, we're we, representing we're representing the the Geary Cats. So no matter what the result, we're proud to be there. And yeah. I tell you what, I had the most Yorkshire text back when I sent uh, some of the details to Luke and wasn't even a matter of oh Anfield or ooh award show. It was like free parking. It's free parking, <laughs> you know. I knew you'd pick up on that. <laughs> I was like, there's free parking. I knew you'd pick up on that. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. um, I, I'm not not in a sort of you know. I used to live near Anfield, um, so I'm not I making it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, he's, he's like he's like the Alex Esmer of living on a place. He's got a story where he. But oh, I, went no, Barnsley, I went to Barnsley versus Horsham last week. Matt happens to know somebody and been to Horsham, and he's got. Yes, I, I, I knew. I know the Lardy Army. I, I, I used to drink watching Horsham at Horsham. I've never even heard of Horsham. 
<laughs> I, lived there. I lived there before moving to Spain. That was the last place I lived in the UK. Um, no, I did my teacher training in Liverpool, and I used to walk under the cop to school every morning in my first school I ever worked in. My classroom used to look out on Goodison. Um, but That's I can't remember the story I was going to tell now. It was quite, oh, yeah, I was going to say, I don't want to mock the Anfield area because I love it around there. But um, when it says free parking, there might be someone there asking for money. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that, but I, I know that we, it is quite funny, but also um, that is what happens. At which so. point, Luke will line down his window and say, Get to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on, your your back. Back. <laughs> on your back. I have yeah. maybe also something else to announce, maybe. Okay. All right. Okay. This was not on the agenda. So I apologize in advance, people. <laughs> Go on. Because it seems like. We are in the pre-nominations of two more awards. Okay. Let me take a look at how it's called. Because we are in the pre-selection of the Sports Podcast Awards. Okay. Which are global, global awards. So watch out, Real Madrid. <laughs> Watch out, Alex. Alex has more. Well, who won last year? Sky Sky Sports. Yeah, we can take. Yeah, it Sky Sky Sports yeah. transfer centers won it the last like yeah. four years. Is that big? Is it bigger um, than the No, no, no way. It used to be better when it when it was with Jim White and Kate Abdo, but they've yeah. both all gone to pastures new now. Yeah. The thing is, though, that this is like uh, they have a pre-selection, so um, judges are going to look into it. I did send yeah. a list of judges, right? Yeah. I, 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 that scared the shit was, out of me. I, I was sort of thinking when I said, oh, we could be a bit self-indulgent at the start, and I thought the intro might be shorter, but we're going close <laughs> to longer than when we have actual Malaga news to talk about. So I, I don't want to sit here reading out lists of other podcasts that we have. No, to but there are some scary people in there. Okay. Because it's like, like the football content awards are great. Um, and very professional people, but this is n the judges who judge us is like insane. Okay. Chris, it's don't put it down part. yet. Let let let's win the trophy it. first and then lower it. Lower it. <laughs> this, so, is, this is this is the Champions League we're going for right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, I think I think we can be proud that we are there. Um, and can be very proud if you get kicked out in the first round. Okay, that's fair. Is that fair? Yeah. Yes. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, let's, um, <laughs> let's, <laughs> try, I'm desperately trying to cling to a, a way to segue this into the core of a game, but I am struggling. So uh, I'll just, I'll just be, I'll just be blunt. Let, let's go to the next part of the podcast where I promise you, um, Malaga fans, we will talk a lot more about Malaga as we talk about that 1-1 draw at La Rosaleda against Cordoba. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to that Cordoba game. It was Cordoba, sorry, Malaga won, Cordoba won at La Rosaleda Sunday night. Um, before we go into like the start in 11 and little bits like that, I know we've done this every week, but again, um, I just want to give a shout out to the crowd again. I would say, I think both me and Chris agreed that the last game where um, it was full, it, the atmosphere was great as always, but maybe not to what it's been. I don't know about you, Chris, I think it was, very good considering what Malaga were doing on the pitch. And I've got to be honest with you, the Cordoba mm -hmm. fans added something to the atmosphere, I thought, compared to yeah. other games. This Definitely. The atmosphere was better than the last match against Real Madrid-Castilla, but still, I wasn't very happy, if I'm honest. Um, but maybe because because that's of the place where I'm sitting, because I'm sitting on the other corner of the famous uh, 538 section. Hmm. So, yeah. uh, famous 
Perfection. Wow. That's got to go on a flag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but local, the people um, <laughs> around me yeah, um, <laughs> didn't really understand, I think, where they signed up to in which section of the ground. Okay. Chris and Matt, would you, would you guys obviously after being in there, would you say that it was a sellout then? Because like the numbers, the figures, what they're putting out isn't saying a sellout, although they are advertising it as a sellout, if you know what I mean. Well, I think they, they sell all the tickets and all the season tickets are taken and maybe yeah. the season ticket holders not taking their seats or whatever. I don't know. Mm. But I, I'd say, again, it's, it's a bit different for this game because that co corner with the Cordoba fans it just made the stadium look. It, it looked fuller than usual to me on on Sunday. But I think just because that one corner was so full, and I think it was one of the better atmospheres this season, just because there was something to bounce across. And obviously, we we virtually never get that. Um, yeah, I thought the Cordoba fans were great. Um, they they were in the city centre from the start of the day. Like, well, because <laughs> I was in the city centre from the start of the day, um, and they were. You know, they were great. They were sort of just mingling around Malaga fans. They were outside La Rosaleda with Malaga fans. They had um, the bar, the other side of the river. Um, you know, they were setting off pyro and stuff on on that bit by the riverside and there was no trouble. And, as for, you know, I've read lots of stories of people just getting on and it a bit like the Antiquera game, lots of praise. And, um, yeah, and I think there was a bit sort of going back and forth in the stadium, but it was good-natured, so... Long may that continue. Um, yeah, I thought the atmosphere was good. I, I can't remember every single atmosphere. I thought the Malia game was quite good fun. But, um, yeah, this was good, I thought. Um, yeah, the other thing I was going to mention um, about the game, and may, maybe we'll talk about it a bit more, but I thought it was worth mentioning it at the start. Um, we're going to talk about the start in 11, but someone else lining up on the pitch was... Um, the first female referee to referee a game, um, I think a Malaga game, or certainly at La Rosaleda, um, Marta Uetza de Atza. Um, just, I don't think we need to say much more than um, it was great to see her. She's refed at World Cup and Champions League, um, in the Women's World Cup and Women's Champions League. So it's her, her ref in a third division game in is, means nothing to me. I think it's great to see that. Can I, see so, can, can I say something maybe stupid or maybe not stupid about it? Um, I yeah, you can say something and we'll we'll take. You it look there. worried, Matt. Um, a little bit, but I, go on. <laughs> I, I saw think... some. I know. I saw some of your comments about it, so I know it's going to be something positive or attempting to be positive at least. The moment we are giving attention to it, we make it special. And I think it shouldn't be special. Well, this was a point I was going to make as well, actually. That, um, to be honest with you, it I didn't really, and again, I don't, uh, at least not patching, I, I didn't really notice it at all. Because um, I saw all these people, wow, what an amazing performance and things like that. And I, I, to be honest with you, then I thought to myself, well, what made that performance so amazing? And, and then I thought, well, <clears throat> I didn't really. Know. There was one bit where, she, I can't remember. I think it was when she was booking someone and she sort of came running across. And that, that's when I was like, oh, yeah, we've got that female ref tonight. Um, and yeah, but, I don't think this. But I think that's I, a I, sort I, of the performance, though, isn't it, Matt? I think we don't. Papers, so, uh, newspapers that, and media writing about it before the match even started in the week before. And I felt, why? Yeah. Well, I suppose uh, we should highlight it because we are talking about it now, just as because it's, I guess, a historical moment in like it's the first time it's happened for Malaga. Um, Nick, sorry, I didn't catch what you were saying, and I think it cut out or something. Uh, I was just saying that you know it's a, it's a sign of a good refereeing performance if you don't know it's a referee. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like you know, um, I think Alex said as much in our group. He said it was one of the best refereeing performances he's ever seen. Um, oh, she irritated me to my. Um... To my guts, and um, doing that means she's the same as any any other referee. So, well, the, the the thing you look at what actually happened within the game, and you know, you, we we forget obviously we, there was a player sent off in there, there was a a few yellow cards, you know, divvied out. Um, but compared to some of the other 
referees that we've had in the past who we, we do take exception with, um, she seemed to command authority brilliantly. Yeah. And like I say, there's, 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 there's no reason why she shouldn't either. I mean, that's the thing for me a bit. Like, oh, she showed authority. Um, doesn't every rep do that? Yeah, but Other I guess what I, I've seen. So are we are ju judging now her as a woman being no. a ref? Or are we judging I, her as a ref? I think... I, I mean, think that's just a thing for me. Hmm. Yeah, because no, I, I think it shouldn't mind. It shouldn't matter if you're a woman or if you're a man. No, of course. That's well, it saying. does matter to me when I'm flirting with you. Um, yeah. the ref just, never... just step back from the line, Chris. Just yeah, we do it. <laughs> but, but the ref really never. No, no, but the ref. Ne I, I never been interested in the ref. So, to be um, honest, but it doesn't matter. To be honest with you, I was saying that um, to someone um, last week about something where I, I think I can't remember. I was watching the Premier League game and someone was talking on the ref. I, I have no idea. I've never really been good at remembering who refs are, apart from. Like, you know, your big characters like Mike Dean and stuff. But otherwise, I'm awful at remembering which ref is acts this way and stuff. But anyway, I thought it was just worth flagging up because it was a historical moment. She was um, in her post-match comments as well. Um, she was really kind about La Rosaleda and saying that, like, you know, what, she was sort of like, wow, what a, what a place to referee. And she was really happy to be there. And um, she said it was a gift to be given that game. And I think she but had a... I think she had a four-year-old daughter with her, I read as well. And, you know, there's a lot of kids go to the game, a lot of girls, lots of women. So it's probably a positive but, but thing. That's, that's, but that's the whole thing. Because I see a lot of women every time in La Rosaleda. Yeah. And it's good, it's good that there's female there, There's no ref getting attention. Yeah, but... but it but And I'm know. saying it in a, in, a, in a good way. Like, it shouldn't matter. Who yeah, is the ref? Exactly. If, it's, if it's a woman or a man or anyone. It shouldn't, yeah. but it still does raise good points. Yeah. Like, for example, when Ruby came and I was watching yeah. it on my iPad and she saw there was a girl referee, she was like, oh, that's unusual, but that's it's cool. Promote, it's promoting it. Yeah, but it should be normal. That, that's yeah, my point. It is. It, it, it should be. be it, it, it should be, but it isn't. That's the yeah. thing. That's what but makes it. As long as we keep talking about it and keep giving attention to it, how special it is but, every time. It will never be saying, normal. I think, I think the mean... Not about us, is, not on the gear no, 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 I know, but I, general. General. It's but I mean... The, it's more the first time that this has happened. Like, it's not going to go on every time. For example, we have a woman referee. It's just that this is the very first time kind of thing. I think that's what... Yeah. It's 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 a, it's a, you, you have to with a lot of things. It's also like uh, when famous people come out of the closet, for example. If it gets so much media attention, something that is very normal or should be very normal in this that's a very different topic, that is though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but, but but I also feel the same about that because it's yeah. something normal, it's love, it's nothing strange or or special, you know. Anyway, we've uh, we've given her a moment, and yeah, like you said, Chris, it's a bit it's a bit but like me. when uh, when um like, I don't know, I remember when Jackie Oatley became the first woman to commentate on Match of the Day, and it was front page yeah. news and back page news, and now... Yeah. But why? Because then it, it, it yeah. never gets... Like, it, 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 it stays special. Yeah. The moment yeah. you stop giving attention to things, we they are normal. Okay. Um, hey, what, okay. about those two, what about those two, them two linesmen? What a game <laughs> they are. Yeah, but we don't talk about that. They were two of the best like, lines I've seen all for, season. For any other referee this season, are you okay, Nick? For any other uh, referee this season, being in La Rosa Chris, Lola is, Chris, a, is Chris, a highlight. Chris, you're in the same point over and over again yeah. now. I'm trying to get on to the game. <laughs> okay, finally. Um, um, okay. Anyway, the Malaga. Let's go to the um, the footballers on the pitch. Um the sort of usual, well, you know, our focus here, the starting 11, I'm going to be honest with you, pretty much what we expected, wasn't it? I, I don't know if there was any surprises in there for anyone. I, it's our, pretty much what we expected from day one, really, wasn't it, Luke? Yeah, for me, the only the only surprise was Nelson Monte. After Barracaldo, we, I think we all feared the worst for him coming off so early. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I did read like, well, sorry, I think he said in an interview this week that that was purely precautional. And like he he was aware that he'd played a lot of minutes and even if he felt something little, he'd get off the pitch. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I was, it's like you said, I know we spoke in our WhatsApp group this week that we're a bit like, uh-oh. But um, yeah, fortunately, there seems to be no after effects there and it's all good. Um, I, I don't know if any of you guys have got anything you want to say on the start and 11, but it seemed pretty, you know, our Malaga back to what we expected. Um, Nick, you watched on TV. How did Malaga sort of start this game? How did they look at the beginning of the game? Um, I, th- I, th- I think we looked very slow. Uh, quite unusually as well, because even in games where you know we've we've maybe played better teams, we've usually started better when we've usually dominated the ball. Whereas this, um, to me, certainly seemed a bit of a an onslaught from the very beginning. Um, from Cordoba, they they play with no fear, in my okay. opinion. Uh, Chris, you were there in the Fondo Sur, so I'm trying to think. Yeah, Cordoba attacked us in the first half. What did you make about? Malaga's start to the game because I, I saw it a little bit different to Nick. I do agree with um, Cordoba showed no fear, but I don't know. I thought Malaga started quite controlled without doing much. But I'm happy to hear what you think, Chris. It seemed like we. Uh, it seemed like Malaga had played um, 120 minutes last Wednesday. Wednesday at the other side of Spain. Uh, that's how it looked to me. And yeah. uh, I said it earlier, we should have thrown away the cup. And uh, this is exactly one of the reasons why. I wouldn't agree with that, though. Like, cause I think we did put a, you know, it's pretty much only Nelson Monte that started in that. I don't think if you're going to try, we, we had to travel up there, so we may as well yes. have a You have to travel, it, but you don't have to play 130 minutes if you can play 90. Well, but, yeah, but... You can't, a footballer, I don't think a professional footballer can go out on the pitch and just go, actually, let's save our legs half hour, let's give him a No, but let's not give a fuck. Well, yeah, but then that would be, I, I don't, there's a cup still, it's still, I, I'm not saying we're going to win it, but it, it's games for those squad players, good for them. I, I'm not saying, I don't, I, I think, you know, I like cup competitions, to be honest with you. I don't, I'm not saying that we need to go all out in them, but we've got a squad. We've got a young squad, some players that get them experience. If we lose, then fine, but we have to go there. So I don't think I like do. winning uh, the league more than win, than getting through in the cup. Yeah, yeah, me too. But I, I think well, the earlier you get thrown out of the cup, the better. I still believe that because now we have played 120 minutes, which and it's some players like Antonio Cordero and players like that, and our goalie saves some penalties. There's I think there's plenty of things we took in that game, personally. Yeah, but it's also I, I, a lot of minutes with a very tight squad. Yeah, but like I'm looking at the starting eleven here, I think there's only two players that played that game. Danny Lorenzo, who hasn't played that much and probably welcomed some playing time. And Nelson Monte, of course, like he had his concerns. Um, um, but no, I don't... I, I, yeah, I do agree with you though. I think the cut, I'm not, I think it did have a bit of an impact, but mainly because I think Cordoba didn't play in the cup. But um, again, we could, um, yeah, no, I, I don't know. I thought we started the game like quite not well, but I think we had all the ball. And I think I, I remember saying to our pal Carl that uh, David LaRubia looked quite lively. And I said, oh, if he can just get that his passing sorted out a bit, I think he'll find an opening eventually. And a bit like Nick said, it just seemed like Cordoba, Cordoba went, well, actually, not having this. Let's just go at them. And then I would say from there on in, after about the first 15 minutes, it was pretty brutal. Um, what about you, um, um, uh, Luke? What Did you think that Cordoba were like one of the best teams we've come up against so far? Yeah, for sure. Um, at first, I was just thinking Malaga were playing shit. I was thinking, come on, let's wake up, lads, kind of thing. But very quickly after that, you start realising, I think Corda were actually looking great. Um, I was very impressed with them going forward and defensively. I thought Kuki up top looked very, very good. Uh, the centre half, Goodelli, their captain, he looked like a, a real warrior in defence. And did, did anybody know if that is the brother of Goodelli at Seville? 
because he oh, was know. basically the exact same, the man bun, the tattoos, everything. And but I thought he looked a I thought he looked a brilliant player. Uh they they'll take a lot from that game. Mm. I like the I like the two wingers. And I, I think the one that's the guy who scored, um Seymour, but um I, it was only after the game I looked him up and I forgot what number he is now, but I think it was Caracado. I thought he was really good. Cas Caracedo, yeah, number twenty three. Ah, uh, Caracedo, the, sorry. Where Cordoba won it, especially in the first half, is that as soon as they started to dominate in the midfield like they did, especially stacking it with the five in there, you know, we just got overrun in the end. And and I think that's what you, know, you know why you know Gennaro had a very off game. I, I thought David Larubia was okay, but again, a bit sideways for, for me. Kind of like he was kind yeah. of looking for Nala, but it couldn't come. And then I think Dan Lorenzo also didn't have a great game either. So, you know, when they really started to tick and start to move forward and you know, especially started to give, you know, it was hassle with uh, that Simo and with Caracedo. It, it, it just seemed like a bit of an onslaught, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they they were re rewarded as such. Do you, do you yeah. guys think that we we seem to run out of ideas quickly? Yeah, because that's sort of what I picked up on. Because I I actually personally think David Lar David Larubia had a good game for like different reasons. Not an amazing game, by the way. I don't think he was excellent, but. I do agree with Nick there that there was a lot of times when he was going a bit sideways, but he was getting the ball a lot. He was getting, he was winning the ball a lot as well, actually, in this game. But, and I think I said the car, like once he sort of just gets that little breakthrough of that pass, and I think he'll get going. And yeah, it, it was almost like Cordoba went, oh no. We is that, is that pass to who though, Matt? That's the thing, because I think it, again in this wow. game, you know, the only Roberto didn't look bad, but they didn't look great either. But, you know, I I don't think we can look too far away from the fact that you know a few games ago we were looking at Roberto as if we were looking at a twenty goal. Yeah, strike. but I I have something to say about that. Mm -hmm. Not sure if I have to say it now. Go for it. Go say it now. The thing we saw with Cordoba is the thing we are lacking the whole season because we are the whole season passing the ball back. There is there is no. Not any pace in our attacks. We dribble, we get the ball back. We dribble, we get the ball back. There's no pace at all. That's one thing. And the other thing is, if we, um, if our defenders or midfielders throw long balls at Roberto, who is on his own with three defenders around him, you cannot expect anything from Roberto. Because that's one thing I saw, saw a lot uh, this weekend, and we do that many times. Mm. We we it seems like we dribble too much, and then we take the ball back, and then we try another thing, and then we try another impossible thing, and then we go back and we pass the ball back again. I, I've got no issue with us. Pa I do agree we need a bit more cutting edge. I, I've got no is issue with us passing us back if we're keeping the ball. I think we're quite good there. Um, I will agree with the... I will say more than ever, and again, I don't know if you can see it where you were, Chris, or if you guys can see it on TV, but the thing I notice more than anything, because I think where I am in the stadium, I can see the pitch quite well, is Dioni, and I think I've sort of praised him for this a little bit in previous episodes, that he does wander a bit. But bloody hell, he was wandering so deep in this game, deeper than he's gone yeah. before. And I and I was like, no, like he was. I think he was like right back at one point. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing there? Um, and that and that's and a, that that's a trait of somebody who has played a lot of lower level football as well. You want to get yourself involved. Whereas yeah. Roberto and and the, the 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 big knock on effect of that is that it left Roberto very isolated. And I think Roberto needs somebody to act as a foil for him to get the best out of him. Um, and unfortunately, I think the only tr trying to make things happen. So you kind of got to go, well, you know, I appreciate the effort, but it's a team game. You know, you, you, we're not relying on you to make something happen from right back. We, we need you to play your part up top. And again, I think we were a bit toothless. That's probably you know another way for us to, to describe that your, performance. A lot of times, because mm -hmm. Matt, you're saying that it's okay with you with getting the passing the ball back. Yeah, and I'm not saying do it all game, but I'd rather keep the ball. But we do we do that a lot. How many chances do we create in a match? 
yeah, I think I often, that. often our goals come from mistakes from defenders. Yeah, yeah, that's fine because we keep the ball. That's that's what again. Yeah, but if you play against a strong defense, then it's a strong defense. That's they're going yeah, to but... play. I agree. I agree. No, I'm not. I'm not. I know. I'm not saying we're perfect. Of course, I'm not. But um, like again, not to be you know fill the the Alex Ashmore void here and talk about my own team, but like when I used to watch Swansea and the, like, you know, when we played all the passing football, that's what Swansea used to do. We used to just pass the ball. Now we're nowhere near as good as the Swansea teams I've watched. I'll be honest yeah. with you that. But, but we, we see that a lot of times, a lot of times it doesn't work. Yeah. But then again, I keep hearing it doesn't work and I see in people called Pepe, you say, and I keep thinking we haven't lost since the first game of the season and we've just drawn mm. a game we weren't very good in. I still think some of the negativity is just mad. <laughs> to be yeah, honest, that we shouldn't have lost. Play. It's a massive pattern of play, and, and you know, it's a pay you say plan of football. Pay you say is not going out to win games four or five nil. No, absolutely no two ways about it. No. It is very much let's get ahead and let's see where we end up and controlling also, the game by doing that. And it's not a bad thing, but I think as you know, we're going to get found out a, a little quicker but then, but then like you say it, it's a complete misnomer because we're, we're unbeaten since august so it, it, it's it's quite confusing yeah i i would like again i will say though you say that about pay you see and i'd certainly say he seems to be going more towards that now but there have been games this season where if we've been a little bit you'd said we're toothless but we were a bit more ruthless in in like the final in the round the box but i think we have created chances and could have won some games you know three nil or something like that but i think we do we do tend to create but do we ever really look dangerous like can how many goalkeepers this season have we said have had an absolutely fantastic game okay. against malaga but That's i true. think like like you guys have just been saying it's it's been a strange season really because how many times have we had pods or live streams where we might sound a little bit too negative but yet we are 10 games unbeaten. So the 10 games unbeaten and make you think we are doing everything right. But I don't, mm. I don't think we are really. I it, this league is peeping over cracks, but I don't think we've really got to as high as, as, high as gear kind of thing. No, yeah. and I think with this league as well, with the nature of it, is that you're essentially playing in two leagues. You've got a league where you've got quality good football clubs that play decent football, like Cordoba, like your Quelvers, um, you know, your Castellons, Ibiza. And then you've got your other clubs, which I'm not saying are bad clubs, but they play football in a certain way, maybe aren't as adventurous, maybe aren't as high profile as some of the other ones. And it kind of shifts your focus a little bit. And that's where you think, well, you know, someone like San Fernando, yeah, we should be putting them you know, five past them, they're, they're, they're this tiny little club type thing where in reality it, it doesn't work that way. And, you know, in a game like Cordoba here, I got a point's a good point against Cordoba. They're in form. They're doing well. Um, they yeah. play decent football. So, you know, I, I think it will sway opinion on things throughout the season depending on results against certain teams in, in, in my yeah. book. Okay. I think we could, yeah, like you said, we could talk about the philosophy of it all a lot more and i'm sure we will throughout the season but let's perhaps get back onto the game a little bit more let's see we've said cordoba were really good i think the goal was coming they deserved their goal 39th minute um cross from the right after an einar header which was not great to say the least um a simple low header in front you know right in the middle of the six yard box really um luke i, I any thoughts on the goal? I did see someone suggest, "Oh, Herrero should have done better," and I was like, oh, "Be quiet." No, I don't, I don't, I don't think <laughs> Herrero could have done anything really. But I, I just think it were uh, really uncharacteristic of our defense this season. Like they've been very solid. But I mean, who did did anybody see whose man it actually was? Who? So I mean, you're in absolute acres on that front post. Yeah. Um, I guess it would have been Danny Sanchez, wouldn't it? But, was it? Oh, was sorry, it, in the middle. Middle. Sorry, yeah. I, who? Who? Somebody came to the front post, didn't they? With the man. I think, I think it was I know. They know. Went remember, over the top, and then the, the guy. Yeah, yeah. The guy could have done anything with it, basically. Oh and yeah, I he know. went for the full-on Chef Kikuchi swan dive. Uh, yeah. For yeah. The finish. He, he was only two inches off the ground with the way he headed that. It was a <laughs> brilliant goal, to be fair. You know, you yeah, really, yeah. gave appreciate his game. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like you say, Matt, it, it was coming. Cordoba really smelled, smelled blood and went for it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, Nick or Chris, you have anything to add on the goal? 
great goal it was coming like you guys said you knew yeah. it was going to come and the chef Kikuchi doesn't get mentioned this podcast enough <laughs> and they they deserved it as well so yeah yeah we, yeah we, uh, shout out to chef Kikuchi. we'll get that in now i do love chef Kikuchi. he did play for swansea very briefly um yeah um i, I i'll pretty much say by the time um the Cordoba goal was coming I think I'd even uttered the words we let's just get to half time and then try and change things up um Chris from where you were in the second half until the end which we'll talk about shortly do you think anything really changed in the second half I think we looked a little bit better it seemed like we tried to create more but it was again <laughs> passing back passing back passing here passing no yeah. really came from it yeah i i think we did sort of try to go forward a bit more but in the same sense we opened up a bit more we looked quite nervous actually i don't know how it came across on tv guys because it did look much more open again yeah i think we just yeah. we slowly grew into the second half we had more possession creating a couple of chances i don't think there anything particular what changed in terms of maybe tactics or anything that maybe Dione was slightly closer to Roberto, but nothing too noticeable, I don't think. I, yeah. I think the substitutions were the, the the sort of turning point for the way actually we're playing. They kind of actually gave us some edge, uh, both high time and uh, Cordero seemed to play quite well when they came on. And I think that was more about hooking uh, both Gennaro, who for me had... Uh, a poor game seems to be very hot and cold at the minute. Gennaro he seems to have a worldly performance one week and then absolute crap fest the next. And then again, I don't think Kevin was great in this game either. I think you know he had a very frustrating afternoon, but when he came off and was replaced uh, for high time, high time then had a you know a fair bit of success, you know, getting back up and running. Yeah. It was funny as well with Kevin because I agree with you. He was uh, he was frustrating, and I I feel like when Chris is saying about us passing back a lot, I feel. He was getting squeezed out a lot and was the one that was perhaps most guilty of that. But it was quite funny. I could see them getting the subs ready. And that's when he finally broke through and passed that cross across to La Rubia, who probably should have scored. I don't think I've should seen the challenge. Yeah. Should have um, scored. We had a lot of goal to aim at, and I think he hit the defender. And then that's when Kevin got subbed off. But yeah, I totally agree. Um, I, I, I think... Obviously, I wasn't here when you did the Baracaldo stuff last week. I know you didn't really talk about it. You talked about the other game. But um, I sort of saw the team sheet for the Baracaldo game and Antonito, and I didn't know who he was. And it was only after the game. I was I was thinking, oh, that Antonito was pretty good, actually. I didn't realise it was Cordero. So I really liked him. And I thought he was very good in this game. I'm still, you know, not absolutely like, you know, get, you know, like some of the other young kids we've had come on in the last season or so and being like wow who's this kid but really neat and tidy but um yes i'm sure but when you said i thought you thought the subs made a difference i was hoping you'd say lauren zuniga but um you've gone for that uh, well uh, we've we, we well, actually look, that's just been put on this week <laughs> well we'll we'll talk about him though i think shortly um yeah i i think high tam was the was the one and we'll we'll definitely be talking about him shortly but um let, let let's jump ahead in time then so the I've got to be honest with you. I think we were knocking the door a little bit. Not, I, I was sort of giving up hope. And then Cordoba had another attack. Uh, I think we're talking 86th minute. Cross into the box. Simple header. It's going to be 2 0. But Don Alfonso Herrero, madness. Um, I, I'll say it now, and then you guys can um, disagree, agree. I think this is better than the save two weeks ago. Oh, sorry. Let me. I don't know. How to, let me say. I prefer this save to the one two weeks ago because I don't think I've ever seen a save like it, where he so like anticipates the header and just throws himself across, and then to shoot his hand up to block it. Whereas I thought, I thought the one last, or oh, sorry, two weeks ago, that was more things the goalie practices on a training ground, getting down low, getting yeah, back the, quick. The reactions. Still, still, I think the one, uh, the other match is more difficult than this one. Okay. I, because I, I, this I, I, one is just throwing yourself in and magnificent. Don't okay, get me wrong. So, this this is a dive, an amazing dive. But the other one was two saves in in less than a second. 
yeah, that's why I sort of changed my wording a bit to I prefer that. I think the aesthetics of this one is more fun. It was better to look at. But yeah. this one, I sort of, like when he saved it, I was like, what the hell? Because it just, from where the angle I was at, it looked like he had just an open goal to aim at and he suddenly came flying across. So Yeah, he could oh, definitely yeah. covered some ground up. But it's, it's also like the the size of the save. I don't mean how big Herrero made him. I mean, if Cordoba got 2-0 up there, the game is over. With how Malaga played yeah. that night, we was not coming back. That yeah. save, obviously, lit a fuse. Malaga went for it and so on. It was like Peter Schmeichel-esque with how big <laughs> he said to make himself... I mean, he must have covered about eight foot diving through the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's, well, it's complete, I mean, not a goalkeeping masterclass, in, in in my opinion. You know, to 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 stop a header at point blank from six yards out. I get that the shots from the other week, the double save was brilliant, and there's nothing taken away from that. But to fly through the air, like Luke says, about eight foot in distance, sideways. And then just take it as a full bloody blow from a six yard header point blank. There was just the player were already celebrating the court of a boy. Yeah. Right? It yeah. really was exactly. It was an absolute give me, and then essentially got the assist as well because it ricochets off him so far that Malaga then got the attack and then score at the other end. Wow. But you know, as a passage of play, you 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 won't see anything probably more exciting than that in the Malaga shirt this season. Yeah, because uh, Luke just said it, it, it lit a fuse. I, I would say it was a very, very, very short fuse because um, <laughs> you know it exploded up the other end straight after. And just before we talk about um, High Tam, because I'm sure we've got some things to say about him, um, it was quite nice to see those videos of the North stands that when Malaga did score, they were all like pointing at um, Herrero and saying, you know, that's your goal, that's your assist. And um, that was quite nice to see that he got like the... Uh, the, during the match, he got that sort of mention from the fans. But yes, we did. I'm, um, I'm thinking of shaving my beard and just having a Herrero moustache <laughs> in celebration. He's a cool guy. Huh? Yeah, we should say just quickly before we move away from Herrero, I should mention today it was quite nice to see them. Malaga had um, El, El Dia de Potero with um, all the goalies training together from like the, God knows, some of them looked like, like they were five all the way up to the academy mm -hmm. team. Was it's there their second, second season in a row they're doing yeah, their third. Really cool. It's a really great initiative. Yeah, it was really cool to see them all warming up and they were all like warming up from like the littlest kids to the middle kids to the teenagers to the older ones. I caught, It was just a nice video to watch. So if you haven't seen that, I think it's about two minutes long on Malaga's official Twitter account. So definitely go check that out. Um, Chris, I'm going to come to you for High Tam's goal. Um, it, it, it's all on you, we hear. You... <laughs> I've created this goal. <laughs> hey, sorry, Herrero. We just give you the assist. Um, we're not giving it to Roberto. We're giving it to Chris Marquez. Do you want to explain why? The Oracle. I knew it again. <laughs> I saw Haitham warming up. And I said to my friend Alex, I said, Haitham is coming in. He will score. And then I even, when Haitham was warming up, because I'm very close to uh, where they warm up, so... He came towards me. I'm saying, you are going to score. And he scored. I knew it again. Second time in a row. <laughs> did, did, Chris, did he did say anything Chris. back to you? Did, did he go, yeah, cheer, cheers, Chris. I've got I've got this now. Nothing. Chris, what, Nothing. When, he he scored, when, he, when he scored, was it you who, who we ran over pointing to? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I like to think as well, High Time listens to the podcast, and he's like, I really want to get on the pitch. So he cuddled up next to Pais, put his hand on Pais's knee, and gone. Kevin's playing crap. <laughs> I, I'll score if you get me on. Chris Marquez has said. Um, now is um, um again. I, I I think we sort of did reference Roberto um, being stuck up top because I thought he did as much as he could in this game. But he was, I thought he was excellent for the goal, sort of battling and hooking it across the box. Lorenz Zuniga with a brilliant dummy. <laughs> to well, can, 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 can any of you explain what what lauren does with when when i just can't get it out of my mouth it's He's just done. moments of quality the, the it's, touch it's, it's total the touch awareness the, the, this was a clear it were a clear dummy lauren knew exactly he had the shout hi dams hi dams it was the dummy i'll just Football give you one is, is. 400 times. He made us look like he swung his left foot at it, but he didn't. 
He wanted to, he wanted to backfooted it, but he tripled over his own feet and then didn't hit the ball. That's what he That's wanted. Lauren, we know. <laughs> I'll just read it out, guys. Um, 85th minute, Lauren Zuniga comes on. 87th minute, Malaga score. There you go. Creates it's he's a, a game. He's a magician. Exactly. A handful. They put two men on him and oh, no. gave him the space. <laughs> on a, Did you not shout a... anything to him when he was warming up? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, on a on a more serious note, it was um it was lovely to see um high time score Nick and his sort of emotional celebration, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I, th- I think we've said it on a couple of podcasts before. When you've had an injury that's kept you out for a very long time, you know, to to come back in and score, you know, in front of twenty odd thousand people, and essentially get the goal that rescues a point. He's got to be emotional, and that's why you saw him at the end, sort of like in tears in the celebration as well. It's for us, it's great to have him back. It's gonna be like a new signing, essentially. You know, we're benefiting from you know having these players that were injured coming back into the fold and just adding further quality to what we've got. And it's gonna give uh Pace a bit of a headache because he seems to have settled on this Dioni, Roberto, Kevin front three front two-ish thing but with high time coming in you know someone's got to make way yeah and i agree like you know we've just said kevin's had a you know you know not a great game um it sort of puts a bit of pressure on him and whoever's on the right wing that if you don't have that great game this guy's you know breathing down your neck and he'll take your place if you keep having games like this um yeah i thought thought, and also I, i don't know if we've actually said this i thought he had a Excellent performance, high time as well. I thought he had a real good impact. Um, it was really he's good. Busy. To see. He, the best number seven in a Malaga shirt we've seen <laughs> we've seen yeah. for a while. I would I would go as far to say. Yeah, honestly, I, I, I can. Think, I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this background story on high time and all the emotional things. You guys all know it. Besides, it's an English podcast. How many Spanish people listen to it? Um, the thing with Haitam is uh, he has been a big talent for a long time, for many seasons. Never came through um, till the point that Haitam started working on himself. Um, of course, training at Malaga, but also uh, being trained in another uh, company that trains footballers. He has been training there with my cousin. Um, who has all his um, manager degrees and he has been working with Haitam for a long time. Uh, Haitam spent it, of course, the training sessions with the club, but also training sessions with uh, with with the company, which is based in Toro Molinos, I forgot the name. And then my cousin told him at the beginning of last season, this is going to be your season. And then when he finally got the chance, he was showing it on the pitch. Um, I think after one or two matches, he get, then gets like um, injured and he's out for a long time again. Appreciate so, yeah. and that's the we thing, should... that he was very emotional. Yeah, we should say as well, for those that don't remember, he came off the bench against, I think it was Zaragoza away. Zaragoza, yeah. And the goal he scored in that game was absolutely beautiful. Like, sort of just hit it, sort of placed her in the far corner, but sort of hit it hard as well. So, yeah. And it was one yeah, of the first was... goals of the season as well, because we weren't scoring yeah. at all, were we? So it was a oh, re- bit of a revelation to, for him to come onto the pitch and actually notch. And, and was... a very beautiful thing was that my cousin... Uh, who is in our group's WhatsApp, uh, was there at the away match against Zaragoza. Oh. And um, he has been talking so much with Haitam um, about where to, to walk, what to do, what he should do. Uh, so position play-wise, but also like training on the pitch. And they they had a moment together after the match, and that was great. So, um, yeah, that's a bit the background story, why it was so emotional for Haitam. And I think, if I'm being honest, I don't think he's knocking on the door or ready to get his place. I think he already deserves his place because he's more decisive than any of the other than any uh, of the other two. 
if you're asking me, but that's my opinion. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think I can. I, I, I'm happy to see him in the starting eleven. If he can keep playing like this, he deserves to be there. So we, we shall see what is next. There's still early doors for me, but I think in regards to talent, there's no doubt that you know he's exceptional. And you know, I, it was. I remember, like Nick said, I forgot really after that Zaragoza game. Um, we weren't scoring goals and the next game we just we were like oh my god just get him in the starting 11 and and we did and then sadly that was the game he got injured just for half time um right let's go on let's try and wrap this bit up uh chumbo and biz naggers um i'll go first with chumbo because there's um i've got three players written down actually there's one standout for me though um i think i do think kevin was in the running i don't think he was great um i thought Gennaro was really poor too but i thought einar was I thought he was terrible. I thought he was. I've never seen him make so many errors, and he just looked a bit all over the place. For for me, it's it's easily I know. Um, you Did know, we discuss think, the uh, the red card? Um, no, he also got sent off. I don't think. Do we need to discuss it? We sort of. No, it was. The right decision. A professional. It was. Yeah, yeah, and it was the right decision from yeah, him as well. Um, yeah, the right point. decision from the ref. So. Yeah. Correct, Chris. We didn't mention the red card. So, yes, another reason. Um, actually, maybe that got him more points for me, if anything, for having... That was probably the best thing he did all game for me was make that decision. Um, not because he got sent off, just to stop that attack when we just gone 1-1. Uh, Luke, what about you? Um, I've actually got three names written down, and it's more for... I don't think they're doing what they can do, and it's our attacking three, Dione, Kevin and Roberto. Um, I just think there's a bit of something missing at the moment. We don't look deadly enough going forward. I think yeah. if Roberto doesn't get uh, get the ball, nothing can happen. So I don't blame Roberto. No, it's no. not. It's not a matter of blaming. It's more of a no. Uh, but I think Roberto did what he could, and he was very important with High Tom's goal. He was. Um, but if you're getting long balls and you're on an island. But so a good who you pick forward always gets chances, whether yeah. he makes them himself or not. Like we said earlier, Robert, we were talking about Roberto, a 20 goal man. He's got two in eight, is it? Yeah. Two in seven, eight. Okay. So he, go? he needs yeah. goals. And in terms of performances, then these, like we say, Kevin's hot on call. Dione, he scored three goals, but is Dione playing well? Has Dione played well? I don't, I don't really know what. We, we, there's no consistency in any of them. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, Chris, about about Roberto in terms of if he's not getting the service, he can't really do much. But I just think as a, a collective, this is probably where, as we'll probably discuss shortly, high time to come in, just a bit of refreshing, whether it's high time or somebody else. I don't know if we've been sussed out or if it's just generally not working at the moment. You're as good okay. at the chances you get, and if you don't get any chances, as well, then no. But say, say if if Roberto <laughs> doesn't get chances for the next ten games and doesn't score in the next ten games, are we still saying Roberto is the right man for it? No, maybe then you should take a look at why he doesn't get the chances, exactly. or why okay. he doesn't give it the three. Sorry, who are you picking, Luke? Uh, I've got to get Kevin. <laughs> okay. Um, Nick, what about you? Uh, I've got the same three names written down that you had. Um, Gennaro, again, dishonourable mention from being Biznaga against Antiquera to dishonourable mention just shows how hot and cold he is. Kevin, poor, um, you know, didn't do what we know he could do. Again, hot and cold. But for me, he's got to be Ina. And even though he did act like a sacrificial lamb um, at the very end with that professional foul, it didn't cover up the fact that he was bloody awful this entire game. He had a, a torrid time against their number nine um, and probably one of the first times you've actually seen him look technically weak um, in this league, which hopefully no one else was watching that when he comes back from suspension. Yeah, and Chris, what about you for Jumbo? I have four uh, names. Okay. We're a bit pushed for time, so can you just give us the one for your children? Because <laughs> we're going to be here. I can do also the ones. I will make it very okay. quick. Okay. Kevin, Kevin, Dioni, Einar, Genado. Okay. 
and I have a lot of doubts about them, but I'm going with Renato because the midfield looked so weak um, and our defense is usually so, so strong that I think it's more Gennaro's fault than maybe defense's fault. Okay. Because a lot of yeah. balls came through the center and just looked very weak like he wasn't there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we've all got very similar names there and interesting that we've got a, quite a mix as well. Um, we did steal a point though, so let's try and finish with the positives. So I, I'll say my biz naga just to get it done. Um, I think we've done the stuff about... Um, Alfonso Herrero and Haitam, but definitely shout out to them. Um, I don't think we've given him a biznaga. I don't even think we've said his name tonight, but still my player of the season. I thought Nelson Monte made up for everything that Ayn has not. I just think he's brilliant. I love him. I think he's our player of the season so far. And he, perhaps the reason we haven't mentioned his name because he just went about things and I think he tidied up a lot of Aynar's bad work. Um, and also he spoke really well on... Um, Aria Malagista this weekend was just seems to love the club. So I love Nelson Monte. So I want to give him a biznaga. So uh Luke, what about you? For me, it was just one of the moments of the season, and I've got to get to Don Alfonso Herrera. Okay, Don Alfonso Herrero. Um, I think he's gonna get all the honorable mentions here and maybe even the biznaga. So, Nick, do you have anyone different? Another one for the Don. Yeah. He's he's having a good time at home at the moment. Um, what a what a man! Uh, anyone different, Chris? Yes. Hi, Tom. I thought we'd be going high time with you. So, um, yeah, that's. I think that, like I said, I think they are the three standouts for me. So there's still one thing I want to say about this match, and not only this match, and it's not the fault of the ref. Um, it's time goalkeepers wasting time. <laughs> I mean, it seems to get worse every time or something. I don't know. It's insane how many time a goalkeeper wastes these days. And it's not only this match. It's in all football. It was insane. It was a struggle to watch. Yes, I know. It's that too. It, um, it wasn't great, but um, I've got used to it in this. Actually, like you said, in all football, it happens. So... Uh, so yeah, I think we have to change about that in football in general. That's well, it it is, isn't it? That's why the Premier League games are all about two days long these days. But um, anyway, we can. Matt, did about. you wear? There's just two quick stats, facts about the game the other day. If you guys saw it, but we actually finished with six players on the age of 22 years old oh, on Sunday. Nice. That being Danny Lorenzo, Antonito, Haitam, uh, David Larubia, Roberto, and Lauren. And also nice. a a proud fact for the Malagistas, five of the starting eleven were from Malaga. And on the Ooh. bench, every single player came through the Malaga Academy, barring Juan Hernandez. And that I know is this is caused because of injuries, but that really is. Who did, uh, you, who did you nick this information off? A <laughs> certain guy, what we nick a lot of information off on Twitter. Okay. David Pico. Oh yes, there you go. Yes. I just thought go. that 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 shows our academy and they're doing great things. Well, that's a nice way to link into the next part because um, our squad's a bit battered from injuries and suspensions now, so we might be seeing some more of them in the next game as we head over to the island of Ibiza. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, this Sunday we go to Ibiza, of course, the team above us in the league. Um, I'll just ask it out, I'll, I'll go straight with it, Nick. Is this a big game? Does this decide what we're going for this season, or is it again, like I perhaps said last week, is, is it the month of November which will decide? No, I think you're absolutely right. It's uh it's a huge litmus paper for us um in terms of our ambitions whether we remain in this little mini league with Ibiza and Castellon, make up ground this weekend, or whether we sit as sort of the best of the rest. Because uh, otherwise, I think, just with the way things are going, if we don't rein them back in in this game, 
then the top two could start to really run away with it before Christmas. Yeah, I should say as well, I did note, it's just, I was looking at Ibiza's fixtures. I, I should add that in two weeks' time, the next team to go to Ibiza is Castellon. So it'd be quite nice if we could just stay within touching distance and one of them's got to lose points. What about you, Chris? H how big do you think this game is or do we just huge. plod on? Six points. It's gone huge. Chris has gone huge. No, but it is. If you want yeah. to, if you want to keep up, this is the moment. If you lose, you will be uh, six points mm -hmm. behind uh, Ibiza and nine probably uh, behind Castillon. Good point. Yeah. Um, do you have any advances on huge Luke? Do you want to go massive? Uh, I've got vital. I've used the word oh. vital. <laughs> I didn't think yeah, that. I, totally, I totally agree with what Chris has just said. Uh, if we don't, well, uh, for example, if we lose at the weekend, we can very quickly get stuck into a little league on our own. You know, in every, say, championship season, there's always that one team who's just there. You know that they're going to get the playoff, but they're not really challenging the, the automatic kind of thing. I mean, what Arsenal. is it? I mean, it yeah, well, yeah, ish. <laughs> Spurs. If, um, do a Spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't it? <laughs> no, let's get. Let's not get silly. <laughs> but we, we, if if we get beat on some, say they can very easily start pulling away. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. the, it, the Premier League has many of those teams, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, because Man City just win it. So or every other team by default is one of those teams, I guess, aren't they? I, um, I, I would, I would take a point right now. If offered, I well, it's not I, Liverpool or City, right? I mean, well, there's this other league in England of big clubs, big names. Um, of course, Tottenham is not as big as the rest. Yeah, um, well, you're probably watching Fire and get beat right now. Yeah, we can say Tottenham plays another league, okay. uh, plays another league than themselves, like you have. City, Liverpool, top, yeah, way top yeah. of the yeah. Arsenal, and then yeah, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Um, anyway, so we've, uh, I think, I think Luke won the. Um, I, I went big game, and, and Luke went all the way up to vital game. So you win the adjective t uh, top trumps to describe that game. I'll stick with you, Luke, because um, you you always do a little bit of research for us. Uh, do you want to tell us some stuff about it, Because I know you prepare diligently yeah i've got a couple of little things just basically they are a very attacking team they'll go at us uh but whilst going at us they have also conceded the most goals in the top eight of the league so although going forward they do leave themselves very open they're the second top goal scorers in the league uh interestingly on that malaga have actually got the best defense in the league mm -hmm. so we've only conceded six goals and when you think about that, we conceded two goals in our very first game. So we've conceded four goals in, in 10 games, which clearly shows where we are strongest. However, our defence is it's being torn apart in recent weeks with injuries and now the suspension. But I, I, it's going to be a very open game, I think. I think we are definitely going to see a Pelletier try and nick the point the old sam, Al sam allardyce respect the point kind of thing mm. um we should say a bit a bit of hope um uh because I'll, I'll explain my links to this team i did notice that um ibifa lost to uh via novense in the copa del rey last week who again i think are the league below the, does anyone know my um my affection why i have an affection these days for uh via novense i'm guessing you live there <laughs> well, yeah, 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 that is that is the current home of Welsh in the Welsh under twenty one international Josh Farrell, who I follow on Instagram. The one that played at Torremolinos for a bit, and he's but he's injured at the moment, sadly. So get well soon, Josh. If you do happen to stumble upon this, um, I'm guessing you won't. Um, uh, yeah, it's. Um, I think uh, I, I quite like the stuff about. Um, I didn't realise how many goals they'd scored. Um, I did know the defensive stats, though, so I'm going to give a little plug there. I think I'll use those stats in the latest edition of Malaga Gargar, which will be out soon, um, which will now be 
one game out of date, I just realised, but never mind. Um, Chris, we do know something about Ibiza, though. We know a couple of players, Alberto Escasi, Javi Jimenez and Alex Gallar. Um, any thoughts? Obviously, it, it's in Ibiza. They're not going into the cauldron of La, La Rosaleda, but will they get a good reception? Do, do we care? I mean, if Javi Jimenez plays a good game, I will bang my head against the wall like 50 times. <laughs> As such, he's a great player. I've always known he is. And Gaillard has the talent, but had private difficulties last season. So I could understand why he's performing now. But Javi Jimenez, if he plays a good game, I, I, I will cry. I will bang my head against the wall. Yeah, I think it's fair to say probably um, this podcast has been, how old are we now? Four years? Um, I've, Alberto Escassi, we've always been quite a big champion of, so I don't yeah. think we have uh, any Ill, um, Ill sort of thoughts towards him. And we should say as well, he did give away that amazing penalty uh, a couple of weeks ago <laughs> for Ibiza's loss. Yeah, that, was, that was an insane penalty. Best um, I've ever seen. If you haven't seen it, um, essentially, I think it is a 2-1 as well, isn't it? Yeah, it'd be yeah. losing 2-1 to Intercity. The ball goes in the box, sort of bounces, and Iskasi just catches it and basically thinks... Without a it. reason. Pardon? Without any reason, because... Oh, without any reason, sorry. There was no player around it. If it, This this could be like top number one in the funniest football videos you'll find on YouTube. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on YouTube clips. If anybody has DVDs anymore... It's going to be yeah. on DVDs, maybe. America's home funniest videos would be. Uh... If, it, we're recording this on the 7th of November. If you go on my Twitter on that day and see the video I retweeted of Serie D goal today or on the weekend, it is the best. Similar thing to this where the goalie thinks uh, he's heard a whistle, but he hasn't. It's amazing. Um, it's so funny. So that's definitely worth watching as well. Similar sort of thing to Iskasi, but yes, obviously this one is more, much more relevant to us than um, Serie D or Serie D, I guess. Um, yeah, as well, it'd be for like I think we talked about them when they came up last time. They're quite interesting in the way that they have a lot of money, and or they did, and I think they still do. And they, when they went up to Segunda, obviously they had to conform to La Liga fair play then, and and I'm guessing they don't again now. So, you know, it's no surprise they're up there, really. Um, I would say as well, talking about, you know, strengthening um, Nick, um, I feel like about two months ago, I had no issues with our squad. Um, it's looking a bit threadbare for this game, would you say? Yeah, I was just lo looking at the uh, injury list comparison and we are up to six people on the treatment table compared to the one for Ibiza. So, you know, it... And, and some of them are vital players as well. Your, your Juan days, obviously, Einar suspended. So we've got a gaping hole back there to fill. Um, I think we're missing countless midfielders as well. Sangali, for me, is a huge loss at the moment. And the quicker we get him back, the better. But I think what Luke was saying earlier about these youngsters that are coming through, you know, your Corderas and, and the likes of such, um, even, I don't know if Isa Moreno is going to be back for this game, but. No, um, you know, to, to have that conveyor belt of players just replace them. It's going to be a test if we do have to use them, though, because just looking at this squad, it's stacked. Ibiza are a very good good side. Um, yeah. You know, one, one to really fear, if I'm being honest with you. And I was just looking, I don't know about the whole history of this as well, but I don't think we've ever beaten Ibiza uh, no, in this really. current guise either. Yeah, we've so, got... We've got drawn twice at we've drawn twice at can me says me says. Yeah. Uh, we drew one we drew one one at the end of last season and as Matt I imagine went to the game, it was quite a brutal five nil defeat <laughs> two yeah. years back. I was there as well. And Chris, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Chris came over for that. One. Oh crikey. I forgot <laughs> about that. Um yeah, and actually the, the I remember the, the two all game, I think that was, oh, was it one all or two all the, the away game. And of one all, wasn't it? Roberto scored his first goal for us in that game, and it was a lovely goal. So hopefully more of that. Actually, didn't yeah. I make a comment um, when we played Atletico Balieres that Roberto scores out in the Balearic? So, yeah, so maybe did, yeah. that day yeah. you'll find form there. I said he scores out there. He'd scored once, but <laughs> so just, now he's just, got just two. Just looking at the, some of the stats of our former players, so Escassi, unsurprisingly, five cards in nine games. 
you wouldn't expect anything <laughs> less. Oh, that's uh, Javi Jimenez has played every game so far for Ibiza, which is a, a surprise considering the lack of football he had last season for us. And uh, Ajax go, oh, you know, four goals in um, six starts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of yeah. the form we expected from him. I might be wrong. I've got a feeling that Gaillard scored two in a game and one of them was a last-minute penalty to win it. So I think I might have missed Marem for that. But uh, yeah, it was interesting, Nick, that you picked out um, Sangali because uh, I mean, we'll talk about the centre-backs in a minute. But that centre midfield's a bit worrying with no Sangali, no Juanpe, uh, Manu Molina. I know he might have been useful going back to his old club and no Moreno. So it'll be interesting to see if... Um, Antonio Cordero challenges Gennaro and Danny Lorenzo. We just sort of said Neva was great in the last game. I think Gennaro will play just to just to have a more experienced head on the pitch. Danny Lorenzo played, I think he played all 120 minutes out in Baracaldo and played most of this game. So be interesting. Dan, Danny, Danny Lorenzo is one that for me really needs to start stepping up. We we had very high hopes for him at the start of the season. All our previews and one player we're very much looking forward to. Watching the season, he he was that name, and because he did so well last season, it's not coming out of nothing. No, oh, no, no, absolutely. very well last season. But he is flat at the moment, and again, whether that's who he's playing with is causing the problem, I'm not too sure. But he really needs to step up in this game. Yeah. We we need everybody to step up in this game because you are coming up against. You know, if we thought Cordoba was hard, if we thought. Um, Castilla was difficult. This is going to be um, not a fun game for any of us. Yeah. But yeah. we can look into the the positives at the last time that you know Ibiza played at home in the league. They lost three one to Intercity, so they can be got at. Yeah, they can. They. Well, it also seems that Ibiza score from all over the pitch. I think they've got two defenders who's got two goals, two midfielders who's got four goals apiece. With with us looking so harshly done by injuries like like we were just saying then regarding the centre midfield if we were so so uh, lacking numbers at centre half we're thinking Canaro could drop in but because of the lack of numbers in that centre at Park at moment because of injuries that might not even be an option what we can what he can look at so maybe we are forced into a younger player but is a B for away the game where he wants to be chucking a kid in for his debut at centre half yeah well, it's okay. Let's like the centre half thing. I was, I was going to say actually just quickly on Danny Lorenzo. Um, in Baracaldo, he did play under twenty minutes, and he was actually pretty good. I know it's a league below, but I did think to myself at the time, or oh, maybe this is just the little boost he needs. And obviously, he scored the penalty. Um, he scored the winning penalty, didn't he? Actually, um, I thought right, this might be it. But yeah, he does need to step up. Um, yeah. So obviously, we're talking about who's going to play centre back. Um, Chris, it seems the name being mentioned most is Murillo. Um, thoughts? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but isn't Murillo away with the World Cup? No, no. I think he's, I don't know. That's. I keep hearing that that's the name that's being. Okay. Um, I thought he was going to the World Cup. No, Maybe. that's, uh, he's a Marino, but you've oh, yeah. only got two choices. And that is either mm. Murillo, who I think we've seen him play more at left back. Then we have it centre back or um, Milan. Wow, I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw. Who was the centre half who came on against Barcaldo? This was I was going to throw him in. He was the one I'd actually personally like to see play because I thought yeah, he, was very, he looked very, Santa very, very, very tidy. Yeah, Santa Ella. He he came Santa on. Ella, that's it. I can't remember who got in. Actually, it was Monte who got in. Monte, yeah. Monte, yeah, yeah. And do I was do like, we know how far Moose is off at all? No, I don't. But I think Santa yeah, like came on um, in, you know, it was pretty, you know, not a, a good game of football against Baracaldo, but it was dogged and it was rainy yeah. and it was wet. And he was excellent, actually. I really like the look of him. I think he's only 17 still. And like you've just said, maybe this isn't the game for him, but I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. I'd I'm be, never said, why not? Yeah, exactly. If he can handle. You know the Basque rain and the wind. Why can't he <laughs> deal with? That? Actually, that that'd be interesting. I, you know, this is my geography coming in here. Um, would there can't be many players that have played their first two senior games, one in the Basque country and then their second game in the Balearic Islands. That's a big north-south <laughs> divide he's got in there. 
Um, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of 18 year olds who enjoy going to a beefer. So why can't Santiago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll probably be able to get a drink in a beefer, even though he's 17. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything else to add on this game or something we've missed that, that you want to bring up. I'm going. I'm going to a beefer. That's going to be fun. Um, well, we're going to a beefer and all that. I think I think we've made Venga Boy puns. How many Venga Boy puns do you think we've made on this podcast since the start, Chris? Or, no, even well, puns. Since, we yeah. even tried to get them an interview or something. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that asking the Venga Boys whether they think. Just yeah. because we were like for a month into the Venga Boys. Yeah, I think I think they are the most referenced band or group ever on this. Um, what what yeah. were we refreshing is playing in the afternoon for once for for for, for quite recently. I know we played that middle year game at twelve o'clock in the middle yeah, of the right. day. Most of our games recently have been at like nine o'clock at night, haven't they? So uh, yeah, strange yeah. kickoff time, isn't it? Strange kickoff time. Well, no, that's the three o'clock. <laughs> it's a cool one. It's quite a cool one. The reason I'm going is because obviously I do have work the next morning, so kickoffs are four. Um, game will finish at six ish. Uh, my flight's half eight, <laughs> so it's going to be quite a fun little race to the airport. It's not far from the airport, so I don't think it's going to be that difficult, but I uh, taps wood now. Um, but yeah, um, we'll finish things off there then, guys. Um, Maliga remain undefeated, and we'll, we'll try and be positive, but we do certainly have a tough game coming up. Uh, Chris. You know, thank you. Is there anything I've forgotten to add, or do, should we plug the Gary Cast meetup one more time, or we can do that next week? I don't know. Let's plug things. Okay. So we are up for three awards. It's insane. Three awards. Wow, uh, Nick and Luke are going next week to one. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Gary Cast meetup coming up on the. 16th, 18th, 17th. 18th. Mm -hmm. 18th. 18th. We have the Geary Cast meetup coming up, but we also have a, a Telegram group, mm -hmm. um, which is fun. How well, many members Nick's, do we have in there now? Nick's already yeah. slagged it off, saying that if we put photos in of Malaga in there, he hates it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's, <laughs> he's not. And I would never want to discourage anyone from no, doing that. I uh, just. It's so, so on Sunday, just it just wasn't the day for it, if I'm honest with you. Um, okay. I, think, I think the uh, envy was 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 a bit too much for me. Um, 50, 57, 57 people in there. Is there? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Hi to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not in it yet, because I know many of you are still not in the Telegram group, this is the place you want to be. I don't know why, but this is the place. It's fun. You get to meet other Malaga well, fans. Just quickly, Chris, because I think we've said this a few times, but where do they find the code to join and things like that or whatever you call you it? You don't need a code. You just, if you have Telegram, uh, search for GearyCost. Okay. And if you don't have uh, Telegram, then download it and search for GearyCost. Okay. And if you can't, still can't find it, well, send us a message on social media. Because we always respond. And we'll get you in the door. Um, yeah, awesome. So thank you, Chris. A nice bit of plug in there. Um, I'll do some plug in as well. I I'll say I've finished. Uh, well, well I, I don't know if Nick's adding his bit yet. The latest Malaga Gaga. That will be out soon. Um, I don't think I I'll let you finish it off Saturday already. And it's now? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's in, it's in the Nick Bell production part now. So yeah. I'll have a look him um I, I i've done the words he does the pretty stuff he makes it look all pretty and stuff um and also guys can i just can i can i just give myself a pat on the back um we are on about an hour and a half in not once did i mention that time i met kevin <laughs> <laughs> was it hard for you was what uh, hard <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, easy give well no it, it was um hard but not like that in uh um i was playing real cool and then i, I did fall apart a little bit and um yeah but i'm, I'm not kevin <laughs> and i didn't even i didn't you know now we're mates and stuff um i didn't even you know i played it cool and we were sort of having a pop at him um 
yeah so uh, there you go I've, I've, I've said it now I've spoiled it but never mind um, thank you Luke Chambers thank you very much Matt uh, just one more little plug Sunday will be back definitely for his live streams Paul, I think Nick anyway will we yeah why not we'll go, <laughs> obviously I think, sorry, so I think we're just getting Sunday, definitely Paul. A yeah, lot of yeah. commitments came up. So looking forward to Sunday, hopefully getting over three points. And also, just before you go, Luke, I don't think we've referenced it. It was sort of coincidence that me and Luke both wore shirts of the Copper Liberty Doris finalists. That, that wasn't planned. If people are thinking, oh, is that going to be some joke? Um, <laughs> yeah. sort of it was a bit planned because Luke didn't have his on before. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, don't say anything. No. <laughs> Pulling up the case. This is a tattoo. I, yeah. I am tattoo booker. <laughs> well, I've seen some nutcases that probably do. Um, a lot, actually. I don't even... Uh, lots and lots, anyway. Um, Nick, I will say thank you. Do you want to plug anything? We've all plugged something. Uh, yeah, I'm selling um, a bit of furniture. So if you go into my Facebook marketplace <laughs> and onto my Vinted account, I've got a couple of sideboards, a coffee table. <laughs> um I'm open to offers, so just just go in there. It's collection only, though. Uh, I'm not dropping things off unless it's really local. But yeah, other than that, live stream on Sunday. Ibiza should be great. Big game. Vamos Malaga. Adios. Yeah, bring bring the furniture along to the meetup. How yeah. uh... <laughs> much for a coffee table? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, tenner. <laughs> oh. Okay. And as always, thank you to you guys for listening. Um, come join us on the GiriCast meetup if you can. Come join us on the Telegram group if you can. But otherwise, keep listening. Keep sharing out the GiriCast. Subscribe. Tell your friends down the pub, hey, do you like third division Spanish football? If they say no, just say, well, it doesn't matter. They sometimes don't even bother talking about that. Um, go listen. Um, anyway, thank you for listening. We'll see you soon. Adios. Vamos. Malaga. Okay.